to the best Kiwanis Club in the world. Um, if you'd all please rise. Could Carol Orbison come forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> of course, timing. <laughs> Do you have to? Okay. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Past President Carroll. And can everyone hear me? It's on. Yes. Okay. No. No? I don't think it's on. It's not. Or put, put it closer to, to your mouth. Good now? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and would Steve Farrow, past president Steve Farrow, come and give our invocation, please? Thank you. Nancy? Uh, please bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this food you've set before us. We pray that you will bless it to our use, us to your service. We thank you, uh, especially uh, this holiday season, for our uh, folks in the armed services and our police and fire and uh, other officials that uh, keep us safe during this uh, holiday and Christmas season. And we pray that you will bless our Kiwanis Club as we prepare for a successful 2023 year. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Past President Steve. Well, I'd like to make, please be seated. Enjoy your lunch. I'd like to read a few club announcements. Uh, thanks to our bell ringers last Friday, Bill Du Bois, Jeff Otis, Bob Lowry, joined by Kathy and grandchildren, Mike Halstead, Roger Cummings, joined by Lonnie, and Jackie Clancy. And Mike and I were there too, and we just loved it. It is, if you've never run bells for Salvation Army, it's really fun. And uh, people, are, people are really nice, and they're very generous. We have, speaking of ringing bells, if you haven't done it yet, we have one more slot open this Friday between 4 and 5 o'clock. Um, would anyone like to ring with Carol Orbison? We've got a slot. So that she's, <laughs> Carol's like, I'm ringing, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, you can do that? Okay, so, so um, we, have, we have a volunteer. Yeah, Yes, yeah, Trent, thank you. Trent's just going to go two hours. Your wrist is going to be. And then to finish up our friendly competition with Rotary, I, we're passing around a sign-up sheet for some additional slots the following Friday. Um, you know, we don't want them to win. We want to raise the most money. And of course, always the winner is the Salvation Army. So, um, Kelly asked me to remind you all that there is an easy way to grow our foundation dollars. How many of you have a Kroger Plus card? Anyone? Yeah? And um, how many of you order from Amazon? Well, I do. <laughs> well, have you signed up for the Kroger Community Rewards or the Amazon Smile program? It's something that automatically um, takes a percentage of your purchases to support the Kiwanis Foundation of Indianapolis. Um, it's pretty easy. It's really a no-brainer. You don't have to actually do anything once you sign up. And the dollars add up quickly to support our recognition for students. If you'd like more information, please talk to Kelly about it, because she has more information. Would Roger Cummings come up and tell us about football wrap-up? No. 
No. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> we had a great uh, outing at the Colts facility a couple weeks ago. About 250 people, including children, students, mostly students. Um, it's great to see the, the youth that are coming through the sports, sports side of uh, schools. Uh, there's gonna be some great leaders there, some great football players, hopefully if they sign up locally. <laughs> we had 23 schools invited. I don't think they were all able to make it, but we had a nice turnout. Uh, Pete Ward, who's the COO of the Colts, started out the, the program with some words. And Paul Knighting was there from IHSAA. He had a nice speech. Uh, Colts linebacker, David Thornton, Gave a very inspirational five-minute talk. It was awesome. He did a great job. Uh, Mike Pryor was there to say a few words uh, generally about the Colts. And, um, I'd like to thank those folks that sponsored a team table, along with myself, Trent Calls, Steve Farrow, Duke Haddad, Mike Halstead, Katie Harris, Jean Ann Kirby, Mary Marsh, and Rob Schlegel. Rob also presented a honorary membership that the foundation uh, voted for to Kyle Niedenrip, who had been doing our MCing for I'm gonna eight, eight, nine years now. And he's also started doing the basketball as well. So he's awesome at this. He knows that a lot of the kids, and it's just interesting to have him there. And we're trying to get some more information put into the star. That hasn't happened yet, but we hope to have him be a little more forceful now he's a member. <laughs> and, uh, so next year we're looking forward to uh, improving another great event. So if you didn't get a come, hopefully you can join us next year. Roger, a huge thank you to you and your committee. It was the best football banquet ever. Oh, thank you. Ever. Thank you very much. And David Boyd, so we have Bill, myself, Rob, and Chuck Connerman, who couldn't be here today. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. Back to what I wanted to Okay. <laughs> you know, as often as we can at these meetings, we try to have a foundation grant presentation. Um, because we want our members to know more about where are their dollars going in the community. And today, I'd like to introduce Chief Tony Williamson, Executive Director of the St. Florian Center, to provide a recap of how they use their $2,500 and a bit about what St. Florian does. And Chief, if you could come on up. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, I'm uh, Battalion Chief Anthony Williamson. Uh, I've been with the Indianapolis Fire Department for almost 37 years now, <laughs> and it has truly, truly been a blessing. Um, I used to teach school at North Central High School, and my brother-in-law said, I know you're an educator, but you can also be an educator on the fire department. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? I thought they just put the wet stuff on the red stuff. <laughs> you know, what, what, what's that? And he said, oh, no, you can do that. So I joined the fire department, and it has been the absolute best thing in the world, next to my relationship to Christ and my wife. Don't leave Dylan, leave her out. Um, but as a firefighter, we get to see the community in multiple ways. Things we see on the fire department, they rarely ever make the newspaper, and you do not want them to make the newspaper because we see the community in some of the worst times. And that's the same thing that we, as firefighters, saw for the youth. We saw youth jumping up and down on mattresses that had been thrown out. 
we saw young people uh, playing basketball on courts without any rims or in uh, uh, drug needles been thrown out. We saw broken glass bottles and we saw kids with just a lot of despair, no hope. And a lot of our news media, they were writing kids off saying these kids will never be anything, never do anything. And we were like, you're kidding. These kids are amazing. All they need is an opportunity. So we, the firefighters, we volunteered for a couple of sports programs and they were wonderful sports programs, but they actually put us out because we said our young people need to do more than just play sports. They need character training. They need to know what a leader is and how to be responsible for their actions. So a couple of firefighters, myself and another firefighter, we started the St. Florian Center, which stands for Patron Saint of Firefighters. So that's the short story of how we got started. We want to make a difference in the community. And so we put together a seven week summer camp teaching kids to do something positive, be someone positive, and then they'll have something positive. They work to achieve success and not to obtain material things. So again, we started off with our summer camp and it was great. Well, the demand grew. The demand grew to continue working with the younger siblings. So instead of just 10 to 13 year olds, we went and worked with six to seven year olds. And then the kids did not want to leave the program because they were learning so much and they started excelling in school. They were making D's and F's and they started making A's and B's and on the honor roll was such a blessing. They didn't want to leave our program. And so we started a high school program, which is a youth employment program where we teach young people to get a job, keep a job, excel at a job, and then start their own business. So throughout the years, we, we have continued to expand, making a difference. I love working for the fire department, but our passion is watching our young people excel. Again, we give them opportunities that a lot of them have never seen before. So we take it for granted. Just uh, three weeks ago, we took young people to the Children's Museum. Five out of the 20 kids did not even know what the Children's Museum was. Is that amazing? Didn't know. We took kids this past summer, we took kids to a farm. A firefighter has a farm just on the other side of the Indianapolis airport. Well, kids' faces were smashed up against the window because they had never seen the airport. Oh, wow. Never seen it. Things we take for granted, our young people have never seen or experienced. So that's what we try to do. We try to provide them new opportunities to excel. And while they are excelling, they are learning again to, again, do something positive. The negativity that's out there, they can always find something positive. So you have truly, truly blessed. I cannot say it enough. Your dollars help to support the St. Florence Center programs and especially our after school program. We have boys and girls from all races that are ages 10 to 14 come to our after school program we immediately give them, they sign in, they receive a snack. Um, we help them with their homework because we want them to excel. Average is not good enough. We want them to excel so they have made the honor roll. I think 75% of our young people made the honor roll. Because of, and that's because of what Juana's Club of Indianapolis helped us to achieve. Your dollars go so far. And Mr. Mike Morgan, he's with me today. He's tried to retire, I, again, six times. I won't let him retire. He's just full, full of knowledge. He will tell you, we are so frugal. We know how to stretch a dollar to make it excel and reach these young people where they are. Um, we've been blessed to be in the start and news this past uh, Sunday um, for the season for sharing. So we had an opportunity to just tell a little bit about our, our story. And they said we served 100 kids. We actually served 1,000. But that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. We love them anyway. Just to be recognized it is such an honor. And uh, the young people are our passion. When they excel, that brings joy to our hearts. And we just want to say you should be so proud of what you are doing, not just with our organization, but with so many organizations in the community. As we were discussing earlier, 
you cannot have enough programs to make a difference in the city of Indianapolis. So I applaud you, I thank you. We truly appreciate what you've done and we say keep doing it. And if there's anything we can do, we want, we want to come to that uh, program you just mentioned. Okay. We have to find out how we can partner more because anything that will uplift our young people, that's what we do. Thank you so much for the honor. Thank you. programs. I also want to commend Bill, Roger, Chuck, the uh, committee. That was a phenomenal event last week with the, uh, the football luncheon and we'd love for you to, to come next year. But just that also makes me proud to be a Kiwani and is a super effort to put that on. And also Kelly, uh, tremendous work in uh, getting that off and a thanks to the Colts. Upcoming meetings, hard to believe. Where did this year go, by the way? <laughs> Next Thursday will be our last in-person meeting of the year. And I really encourage you to come out. It's really the last time we get to be with each other before the year ends. So we've got Michael McKillop, Executive Director of Midtown Indy, who will speak to us. And then uh, starting in January, and this is a really special program on January 12th, will be our candle lighting service where, where we remember uh, Kiwanians who have passed, followed by Inez Evans of Indigo on January 26th. That's my birthday, by the way. It'd mean a lot if you came to that program. <laughs> <laughs> Bring gifts? Uh, yeah, uh, actually. Bring <laughs> no problem. We have Andy Mallon with the Capital Improvement Board on February 2nd. And then again, another big program, which uh, Chief Williamson would love to talk with you more about, is our Abe Lincoln Scholars Program which is on February the 24th. We have Fred Payne, who is the new CEO of the United Way on March 2nd. And we've been doing some Zoom programs where we get folks from across the country. And I lined up on February 16th, Jimmy Sony. Jimmy Sony is an author of a, a new book called The Founders on the founding of PayPal mm. about 20 years ago. And a lot of these folks 
you will know who were involved in that. One of them you might have heard of, Elon Musk. He might have been in the news recently, but he's written a really interesting book on PayPal and entrepreneurship. So that's February 16th on Zoom. So again, let's make an effort to to get to as many programs as we can in the new year. I'd also say if you have ideas for programs, suggestions, please let us know. We have a small committee for the programs, but this should be a collective effort of, of getting your suggestions as well. At this time, I wanna introduce Laura Holloway, who's gonna kick off our, our presentation today. Uh, Laura's not only a club board member, she's a Key Club sponsor at Perry Meridian High School and also the Key Club Program Specialist at Kiwanis International, working to build experiential learning, leadership and service learning, programming, reaching teenage members and adult volunteers in over 38 countries. Laura has a master's in Spanish higher education from IUPUI and taught for 12 years. Uh, she's gonna give us an update on Key Club from both the international and local level. Please help me welcome Laura. Okay. Um, really happy to uh, provide an update here and excited to share what our uh, Perry Meridian Key Club is up to. Uh, I'd like to just kind of give you an update about this semester's work. They have been busy um, and they are just a great group of students to work with. So I wanted to start with that and then I'll tell you a little bit more about what I do at uh, KI for Key Club International. So um, I'm going to move over here so I can see the screen, talk you through some of these photos. First of all, if you're on Instagram, you really need to check out their page, the PMHS Key Clubbers. Uh, I think that uh, Webmaster is going to get an award this year for their work. I have not seen that. Kids are good with uh, social, but they are amazing. Um, I pulled this list here from their um, files. This is all of the events they've done since like, I don't know, the end of September there. So they have been very, very busy um, and uh, hard at work. So let's take a look at the next uh, slide here. Not only are they doing um, all of the service projects, they meet bi-monthly, all a general, um, general meeting. There's about 100 kids in the uh, club and we get about 50% attendance, so we have to meet in the auditorium wing. Um, so that's a good good thing. And there's always something that they're doing. This was um, just an icebreaker. They're writing compliments on each other's backs. And then the next photo here, <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, in this next photo, uh, they had a, a guest speaker t talk to us about um, everyday leadership. And uh, it was just a really neat moment that they latched on to um, talking about their perspective. So that's my perspective sitting in that meeting. Um, and then on to the next one, we got um, different service projects. This looks familiar to you, I'm sure. Uh, they love working with the Salvation Army. That's one of the fun things that uh, they learn about. Uh, so that's our Coats for Kids. Uh, that was a highlight for them. They'd never seen Lucas Oil Stadium so close. And, um, then we got the Midwest Food Bank. Uh, I would really like to encourage you all to come to the next um, event that we do with Midwest. We're doing it about once a month. Um, and the reason that we need you is because uh, we'll have about 25 kids and they have a bunch of energy and need direction. And oftentimes it's just me or one of the uh, faculty advisors there and then the employee from Midwest trying to wrangle them and get them going. So once they get there, they start an assembly line and they're chugging ahead. And uh, we were stacking pallets uh, the time before last, and that was a tricky logistics thing. So <laughs> then we got uh, kind of uh, pushed over to putting beans in a sack. So I kind of noticed maybe we needed uh, some more help uh, from, from adults like you that would be willing to work with them. Uh, it's generally just two hours an afternoon during the work week. So if you can make it, that would be great. I'll let you know when the next time is. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, so uh, another uh, familiar event, uh, you might recognize uh, um, Spickle, uh, Scott. Yeah, from the Perry Meridian um, Kiwanis Club. Uh, this was a, a co-key uh, club, so it was the Southport Key Club as well as um, the Perry Meridian Key Club, connecting with the community. It was huge. This was a great event, too, that we could use some more help with. Um, we had, 
I don't know, it was 50 to 100 student volunteers there. Mm -hmm. And we needed all of that help uh, to put on this, uh, planning this event. Um, so there's, it's kind of a two day um, opportunity. So if next year, uh, I think it's gonna be again, October um, time period. And it would be great if you wanted to uh, show up and help us out as well. And I think that's just about it. Let's see if I got any other mm -hmm. photos. So just to tell you a little bit about um, what I do, so uh, I was a, a Spanish teacher taught at Perry Meridian High School, and that's how I started with Key Club, and then I heard about the position that I have opening up from a friend and thought, wow, so I get to do this all the time, I'm volunteering to do this, basically, this is, it sounds like a great opportunity, so I, I took that opportunity and was really glad that I got the chance to, um, to uh, really get out of the classroom. So if you don't know, Key Club International is the world's largest student-led service leadership program. And it is student-led. We're not joking about that. We really just uh, try to stand back and let them run with it because they can really, um, the students that are uh, leaders in Key Club really lead. Um, so I work directly with um, the Key Club International Board I work with the director of Key Club International at KI, and together we help develop their leadership. So uh, we meet weekly uh, with the uh, board and their committees, lots of committee work. Um, and we also get to work with um, the committee members, so that could be general members as well. Uh, it goes all the way down to the club level. And the district governors, the key club district governors. And so we're always doing some type of leadership training and development. Um, and some of the committee work, some of the, the highlights would be uh, the Youth Opportunities Fund. And I think you'll hear a little bit about that uh, from uh, the Kiwanis Children's Fund. Uh, so we have a grant, a service project grant. And this year, um, typical year, we were able to give out uh, nearly $50,000 in uh, service project grants to key clubs, uh, serving about 45 key clubs. So that is all, again, student-led. It's just us getting them to um, work through all of the applications and, and uh, grade them and evaluate them and then run the grant program. Um, so that, uh, as well as the, another really rewarding part is the recognition, the key club recognition program. So uh, that's uh, a lot of your service, award-winning service projects. It's your um, uh, leadership recognition. And so we, re we get to see some really neat um, uh, people and club projects on that. Uh, what else am I forgetting? So um, another piece that they're always innovative and um, I'm just in awe with is uh, their training. So we have key club training for officers um, and they're always coming up with a new way to train our key club future leaders. Um, we just had a big global engagement rally. It was an online event um, and we had a ton of countries show up. Um, uh, Tunisia, there was the, a workshop speaker was the uh, first club uh, in Tunisia, first club in the region, um, and they led a workshop about how they overcame all the obstacles. Um, uh, Colombia, it was another one. Um, so it's truly international, and it they are just an amazing group of students to work with. So um, I just wanted to let you know that that's what that's what we're doing uh, with Key Club, and uh, you know thanks to you guys that were able to do that with uh, Perry Meridian Key Club as well, so. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Does all this stuff not make you feel proud to be a Kwan? I mean, it really, it really does, all the work we're doing. It is now a pleasure to introduce a good friend of mine, Pam Norman who is from Kiwanis International. And I met Pam in my first or second month when I started at Butler about 10 years ago, which is hard to believe. Uh, Pam Norman is the Chief Philanthropy Officer at Kiwanis International and oversees the Kiwanis Children's Fund. She also directs all facets of Kiwanis International corporate and partnership initiatives, including corporate giving and partner marketing. She began her career with Qantas serving in a programmatic role with the Eliminate Project, of which we were 
very supportive of in this club, a joint effort of Kiwanis and UNICEF to rid the world of maternal and neonatal tetanus. Previously, Pam was executive director of Indiana Internet and Ambassadors for Children, both Indiana-based uh, nonprofits. Uh, she's a Butler University graduate. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and a member of the Qantas Club of Zionsville, Kappa Alpha Theta, the Butler Alumni Association, and St. Alphonsus Liguori Catholic Church. She's going to give us an update on Qantas International and all the great things that are going on. So let's help welcome Pam Norman. shortest speaker so you'll be able to hear me since I will be the closest to the microphone. Um, I, I want to uh, start off um, just by saying it is so wonderful to be with all of you today. Um, I have heard nothing but wonderful things throughout the years um, as a staff member um, about your club and I'm thrilled to actually have some personal friendships with um, many of the people in this room. So thank you so much for inviting me to be here. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share an update on the Qantas Children's Fund. And um, just to kind of set the pace here, I've got some remarks. We're gonna watch a video and then uh, we'll open it up for questions and answers. So, uh, sound good? All right, all right. So, um, for the past, 30 years, the Kiwanis Children's Fund has provided support for the life-saving interventions for mothers and babies. Since 1994, Kiwanis has raised and leveraged, get ready for the number, over $260 million to support iodine deficiency disorders along with maternal and neonatal tetanus saving the lives of millions of mothers and babies. So while those official campaigns are over, the work is not done. We as an organization remain committed to focus on optimal iodine nutrition, which leads to healthy brain development, and also furthering the activity of bringing tetanus <coughs> vaccines to mothers and children in the remaining 12 countries where this disease has not been eliminated. So when I began with Kiwanis International, I, I began in a programmatic role with the Eliminate Project. And at that time, uh, the list was 35. And thanks to the generosity of Kiwanians all over the world, we are now down to 12 remaining countries. And, and we will, will remain committed to the sustainable uh, sustainability efforts um, associated with that. So while we um, continue our, our commitment to optimal iodine nutrition along with maternal and neonatal tetanus, I'm here to share with you the vision of what's next for the Children's Fund. I'm pleased to share with you that the Board of Directors, your, your Qantas Children's Fund trustees, um, in November, at our board meeting, uh, approved a, a multi-year fundraising campaign. And while I'm not here to give you the details, I will share with you that it is going to focus on building the capacity of the Children's Fund so that we can, in turn, grant more money out to our clubs and uh, impact more children in local communities. So we're very excited about that. Um, it is going to be a six-year uh, pro uh, uh, program that, we've commit that we will be committed to. Um, this next year is going to be uh, working to secure uh, some lead gifts, and then we will go public with that um, campaign in, um, let's see, it'll be, not Minneapolis, it'll be Denver. It will be Denver at, at the Denver uh, Convention. So stay tuned for that. But I do want to share with you um, you know, information about our Kiwanis causes, because that is really what you're going to be hearing more and more about. So the answer to the question, it lies within the focus on what we call the continuum of impact and providing support for the children prenatal all the way through young adulthood. So think about what we do on the global health scale. That's the prenatal piece. 
And then we think about what we do in Laura's department, service leadership programs. We have clubs for children um, age six, um, and then students all the way up through college. So that is the continuum of impact that I want you to be thinking about. Uh, the impact of our clubs is extended through the Children's Fund grant program in support of growing the number of projects in alignment with our Qantas causes of health and nutrition, education and literacy, and youth leadership development. So those are the three cause areas. I'll just say them one more time. And that is health and nutrition. So that's our global uh, impact with regard to global health. Um, education and literacy, we all know the foundation of learning begins with reading. And then youth leadership development. Uh, Laura and team, as well as um, what I believe, I, I, th I did a quick um, uh, inquiry to Bryce in our uh, membership department and found out that this club alone sponsors and supports eight different service leadership programs. So thank you for what you do there. Truly, it is important. So I wanna go through each of those, um, those uh, causes, cause areas, and, and share with you a little bit about new partnerships that we have created over the last year. So in alignment with our health and nutrition cause, a partnership with Kids Gardening was launched in March. Community garden toolkits are now available from the Qantas Partners page to assist clubs interested in establishing a project to address the nutritional needs of children in their community. So close your eyes a minute. Imagine the sight of Kiwanis members uh, working alongside our youth members to sow seeds, care for the plants, and then harvest nutritional food from the earth. Gardening, um, we've done a lot of research on gardening um, as staff and have found that gardening engages every child's innate wonder and care for our natural world. It offers opportunities to participate in hands-on learning, and it teaches them how to grow their own food supply. I don't know about you, but in my community during COVID, the number of community gardens increased exponentially. People wanted to get out um, and, and garden, and they wanted to also have control over what went in their bodies. <coughs> So young people who participate in gardening programs enjoy dramatic documented gains across a diverse range of critical growth areas, including personal well-being, nutritional awareness and positive attitudes, environmental stewardship, and community connectedness. One of the things that Kiwanis is all about, connecting communities. So through our monthly club report, um, who's the secretary here of this club? Kelly is. So Kelly, the monthly club report that you, uh, you, you complete each month is very, very important to the staff members. We glean a lot of information, so thank you for what you do there. Um, we have found that uh, over 300 of our clubs have self-identified being involved in community gardens, and so we are, are very eager to support um, those community garden efforts uh, with our grant program. And moving on to education and literacy, every child has the right to learn to read. And in March, the new partnership with Little Free Library was launched in support of our education and literacy cause. So how many of you know what a Little Free Library looks like? Okay, most of you do, but for those who don't, it is, um, it is basically a box that sits on a stand and it is uh, typically installed in a community place um, that, that community members have access to. Uh, it is stocked with books. You take one, you, you bring it back, you take another, you bring it back, you take another, you bring it back. So the cycle goes on. And so we are really excited about this partnership. Um, in fact, our new partner shares a vision for a little free library to be in every community and to provide a book for every reader. Because all people are empowered when the opportunity to discover a personally relevant book to read is not limited by time, space, or privilege. 
This partnership supports the Qantas cause of, of education literacy by helping clubs with the implementation and also the stewardship. Those books have got to be replaced. You've always got to make sure that there are books in the little free libraries in order for the programs to be uh, effective. So right now, we've got more than 150 clubs that are volunteering as little free library stewards and helping to build community and literacy at the local level. And if we don't have one here uh, in, in the local downtown area, your club could be next. So the partnership provides Kiwanis Clubs a discount on Little Free Library books and exchanges. And um, it is also an opportunity because we have um, a co-branding sign that is on every Little Free Library. So imagine the lift for our brand awareness um, when we have these all over the local communities across the globe. Recently, the Children's Fund was awarded a grant from the Brave Heart Foundation to support the installation of these, little, these libraries in the Indianapolis area. So if you think that that's something you might be interested in doing, we'll be launching that um, grant program uh, at the late spring, early summertime. Uh, our grants committee will be meeting uh, in February to talk about exactly how we're going to reach out to Indianapolis area clubs to let them know about this opportunity. So what's next in alignment with uh, youth leadership development causes or the cause? Uh, the Children's Fund uh, this year really focused on the Youth Opportunities Fund as Laura said and through that we also have um, or in addition to that we also have the tomorrow fund which is for circle k members so very robust grant programs in which we provide the funding to support our uh, projects of our, our key clubbers and our circle k members you heard the numbers from laura on uh, the key club side and for circle k um, they received um, over fifteen thousand dollars for projects, and these projects are absolutely incredible. Um, I have the, um, the the wonderful privilege to read those uh, grant or those grant applications and approve the check requests, and it is amazing to me when I uh, look at what they're doing. So they're doing things like stocking school closets with uh, food provisions for their fellow students. They're providing school supplies and hygiene packs to foster children. They're sending military care packages and, and they're being involved in senior citizens outreach. So these projects are preparing our youth members to become the future leaders that our world so desperately needs. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what really great things come of these future leaders. Through the Qantas families shared causes, health and nutrition, education and literacy, and youth leadership development, you have the opportunity to make a difference in each phase of a young child's life. It is a continuum of impact as the work that Kiwanians do in each of those causes helps to build on the next. So you think about this timeline. Um, first of all, children need access to nutrition food in order to be healthy. They need access to educational materials and support services so that they can learn basic skills such as reading. And then finally, our youth need and deserve programs and opportunities that prepare them to lead, not only today, but into the future. So no matter where you live, Indianapolis, Indiana, um, or um, Belgium, uh, in, uh, or Ghent, Belgium, um, there are children who need us. They have no voice. There are children who have no voice in their fate communities that don't have the resources to serve them in a meaningful or sustainable way. And that's why kids need Kiwanis. And our, our Kiwanis Children's Fund extends the reach of Kiwanis Clubs and helps children by granting funds worldwide. So yesterday I met with our programs manager and I asked her to bring, um, I reviewed our, our last few years of grant history and I found that there were no grants for the Qantas Club of Indianapolis. And so I would like to change that in 2023. Um, 
I know that you have a very healthy foundation um, for your club, but I want you to think for a minute about how you could increase your impact with a grant from the Children's Fund. So I wanna tell you about a few opportunities that uh, we have at the Children's Fund for you to uh, impact or increase your impact. So um, I know that um, the club has been uh, an important part of supporting the work, the district work for uh, Riley Hospital. So um, the Pediatric Medicine Fund, um, which was created by the 2005, six, and then 2006, 07 class of governors um, it is an invitation only program and again Kelly if you in the January monthly club report indicate that the club um, raises money and conducts um, you know projects to support Riley Hospital that's all you have to do in order to get an invitation uh, to apply for this grant program uh, it is um, it's, it opens up in March and then applications are due in uh, April 15th and then secondly, uh, the little free library grant program that I just told you about, as defined by our funding partner, um, is go only going to be open for Indianapolis area clubs. So the competition will not be as stiff because there's not gonna be as many clubs that will be applying to, um, to get those grants. Um, those grants do fund 100% of the cost of the library as well as a year's subscription to books that will help to um, supply the inventory. So um, it is a totally funded program and I encourage um, you all as a club to think about uh, applying for that. And then finally, we have just a regular club grant program. Um, we had in the past, you might remember that it had a three um, a, a three times a year we, we gave out grants um, and we actually decided this year because we were opening up some other grant opportunities to go down to two grants, uh, two grant cycles this year. Um, projects that align with the Kiwanis causes will be given priority uh, when our grants committee reviews those applications. And um, while the March deadline has already passed, certainly um, there is plenty of time to be eligible and to apply for the August cycle. And it is, it is quite a, a cycle, um, for sure. So the Qantas Club, um, I wanna um, talk a little bit about what you have done to help support the Qantas uh, Children's Fund. Um, this club has been essential in increasing the impact um, as we have witnessed um, not only generous giving, but consistent giving. Um, you know, we track clubs that uh, that are consistently <laughs> giving to us, and certainly the Qantas Club of Indianapolis is one of those. So I thank you um, for your generosity throughout the last few decades. Over $350,000 has been donated um, from your club. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> Each of those gifts allows us to improve the lives of children around the world and create really great stories of impact uh, that we share in a variety of communication channels um, from the Qantas International Headquarters. So um, I am just about to close, but I couldn't do it, of course, without some kind of ask. Isn't that right? That's my job. It's what I get paid to do. So I am pleased to share news of a new giving program aimed to honor the legacy of our 1991, 1991 international president, Dr. Will Blackman. How many of you know Dr. Will? Several hands, yes, thank you. Uh, this recognition level was launched at the 2022 convention. And um, as of yesterday, um, just over 150 Kiwanis members have honored his dedication to young children by becoming a Dr. Will Blackman. Dr. Will, as he was affectionately known in, during his year of presidency, uh, had a profound impact on the organization. And he actually put Kiwanis on the world stage for early childhood health and development um, by leading the way for successful efforts in fighting iodine deficiency disorders. That was Dr. Will that got us involved in our first global campaign um, addressing um, iodine deficiency disorders. 
and then followed by, of course, maternal and neonatal tetanus. So unrestricted gifts of $2,500 will be recognized with a Dr. Will Blackman Fellowship. And I'd also just like to say that, you know, it's not only about the individuals, but your club collectively could also choose to um, honor maybe an outgoing president. What day, when's your birthday, Graham, you said earlier? <laughs> January 26th. <laughs> um, so think about that as well. <laughs> Shameless plug, it worked. <laughs> so what I'll do now um, is to um, ask Kelly, I've got a, a quick little video that I'd like for you to what see. What mark will you leave on the world? When you're a part of Kiwanis, the answer is all around you. Kids need Kiwanis, and the Kiwanis Children's Fund helps you reach more of them. Because of you, more kids near and far have a chance to be happy, healthy, and safe. Now, imagine, what if every Kiwanis member gave? What if every club made a gift? Imagine how many more hungry kids would get the food they need, or how many students would get the supplies they lack at school. Imagine how many teens could receive leadership training, or how many kids could be mentored by Kiwanians and be inspired to start their own lifelong journey of service. If you've given to the Kiwanis Children's Fund, we thank you, and we hope you'll inspire your fellow members to give too. After all, gifts go farther when they go together. because it really talks about the essence of, of what we do at the Qantas Children's Fund, and that is to take the collective gifts and amplify impact. So not only do you get to affect the children in your local communities, but you really get to be part of an international impact on children um, all around the world. So i um, very happy to, to be able to share that with you today. Um, you know, I, I was thinking, and, and Trent just reminded me, um, that we have a, a, a special person here in the room, Tom Dunham, uh, in the back of the room, uh, a former uh, board member and past president of the Children's Fund. It was before I even came on board with uh, the Children's Fund, so I would like to thank you um, uh, for your dedication and your support um, as a, a past uh, president, uh, we couldn't do what we do without our trustees. Um, they certainly are very involved in our strategy and uh, of course the fiscal health of the Qantas Children's Fund as well. Um, so thank you uh, for your past support. Yes. Um, so I guess, uh, do we have time, Kelly, for questions, q &A? We have like one. Oh, okay. <laughs> one or two. Okay, one or two. How All about, right. Any does questions? anyone have a question? Yes, great. Tough crowd. I need it to have a We're doing all this work with children everywhere, but membership you know, remains an issue with Kiwanis. How are we ultimately working to funnel all these children who, you know, deservedly have benefited from Kiwanis and thinking about becoming members because they're our next generation of Kiwanis? Yeah, so membership, you know, we have been addressing membership, and while that's not my area of expertise for the organization, I certainly am involved in some of those conversations. Um, we had uh, a few years back, we had the formula, which was a, a five-year campaign, um, really launched under the presidency of um, uh, Jim Rochford, and we did experience um, great growth there. But it's one of those things that we cannot rest on, on um, thinking that you know the membership is is the campaign's over and and the efforts are are done. Every single day we need to be inviting people to uh, your Kiwanis Club. Um, every single day we need to be talking about Kiwanis and, and talking about the impact. You've just had some really great opportunities here um, to to you know hear about the impact that your dollars are making, and it's very very important that. Each one of us, I'm a Kiwanian too in Zionsville, Indiana, and, and I've, I've got to you know, make it my personal goal to be talking about um, how great this organization is. And so 
Um, I would say that the efforts, um, the building of, of uh, clubs, new clubs, is, a, is, is just as important as, um, as it is to be growing your existing clubs. So it's not one effort, Graham, you know, there's not one magic bullet that's going to solve it, but I think it takes every single one of us inviting people um, any chance that you get. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. And Pam, we'd like to give you a certificate. Oh, a minute. Thank you. And thank you very much for coming. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> we have made a donation in your name to the Equitable Food Access organization in Indianapolis Neighborhoods Initiative, which is developing community-driven plans and collaboration to build more equitable and sustainable food systems in our great city. Thank you, Nancy. I love that it, it uh, supports our efforts, too, on uh, food and nutrition, health Absolutely. and nutrition. So thank you very much, Thank Nancy. you. So I want to thank you all for Thanks coming. For and um, we're looking forward to next week's meeting. If you can be here, that would be just great. And um, we are adjourned.